Chris Albanese, co-host of the Crew Reviews podcast, and today on Author Spotlight, I get the chance to speak with indie author and my longtime friend, Chris Androwski. Chris has a filmmaking background, but about six years ago, heard the calling to write a novel. To date, he's written three fantasy novels, with another to be released in the middle of 2022. I think you're going to like getting to know Chris, and hopefully, you'll pick up a book or two. All right, so we have uh, Chris Androwski author of three books right now um we have the dregs of the culver waste we have requiem of the bastards we have Haladin's fire and there's another book coming up but chris why don't we uh, why don't we start off by you telling everybody a little bit about yourself what sure. ins- uh, tell me about yourself and what inspired you to become a writer all right well hey first thanks for having me on chris and um yeah, well, actually, it's kind of funny because I, I started out as when growing up, I was addicted to choose your own adventure books. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. Remember that? So yeah, yeah. I Flip went through the pages. Through, <laughs> oh, yeah. And, I, and it really, really introduced me to reading and fantasy and just escapism. And I remember being addicted to it. And that was just as a kid, that was like the seed kind of germinating in the ground. Right. Know? And for years, you know, I read a lot, a lot, a lot. And then as I got older, though, I started kind of moving more towards cinema as far as what kind of inspired me, creativity. So in in a sense, you know, I went off to film school for four years. So I'm kind of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I kind of cheated on on literature for a while with, (laughs) you know, literature became my mistress and cinema became my, my main thing. But, um, you know, being in film school for four years, kind of seeing what really you're going to have to go through to get something made. Yeah, it, it turned me off. Yeah, it, it just turned me off and, you know, and too many limitations. So I started sitting down and I started writing prose and I hated writing screenplays, too. That was a big thing. Hated writing screenplays. It just it was too pared down. And I always just. Oh, well, it's very structured. It's very structured. Very, yeah, there's a formula to it. Exactly. It's very technical goal writing almost like you're writing instructions for somebody else to make it better you know right. and uh i got tired of all the limitations you know after i made my thesis film it cost a lot of money and um you know it was a great experience and i was happy in the end but it, i was like i can't do that again so i started really getting into reading and writing again and i was just really i my first book actually ended up being a horror novel and that's cool i really enjoyed writing it never let a soul look at it but it, it was like, I'm like, this is the direction I want to go in. So starting in like early 2000, I, I really started getting serious about writing again. And I basically was like teaching myself because I had a lot to learn when it came to just everything, you know? Yep. And after I'd say about like 16 years, I finally had something that was what I uh, felt comfortable enough letting other people read. And I, I just fell in love with being able to create any kind of world I wanted, go anywhere I want, no budgets, no constraints. And I think with me, though, the, the battle I'm always fighting is trying to make my books read like a movie in your head. And there's just not a lot of authors that are good at doing yeah. that. And Those are the best books. Yeah. You know, like uh, Stephen King used to be really good at doing that. And that always really inspired me. I'd read those uh Oh, uh, were they uh, the Dark Tower books? Dark Tower, yeah, I got them up there. Yeah, and one, uh, one in particular, uh, what was it? Uh, Wizard and Glass. No, the one with Blaine the Mono. I forgot what that was called. Anyway, my point being, there were a lot of scenes in that where I was really seeing how good a good a writer he was and how influenced by cinema, which he is. And I was like, that's kind of me, you know. But I want to make my books very accessible. And I don't want people to have to keep flipping back and forth to a dictionary. <laughs> And, you know, I, I basically said, I want to write what I wish other authors would kind of write stylistically, maybe leaving out the 10 page description of the prairie and all the fauna on it. Yeah. You know, it was just don't write the like, boring stuff. Don't write the boring stuff. Chris. I, I wanted to, you know, yeah, and I, I didn't want to like sacrifice, but, but basically what I'm trying to say is my, my style came out as being very much like, I want to make the reading experience as comfortable for the reader as possible and really take them on like a roller coaster ride. What, what 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 genre would you say this is though? Um, it's is it is it it's not strictly fantasy. It's not. No. It's got it's got elements of horror in it though, because uh, your world building ability, uh, I think, is utterly amazing. Um, so what what would you classify this as? You know I, I, that's been tough, and yeah. I, now I'm at the point where I can say it's it's fantasy with elements of 
little touches of science fiction and little touches of i hate saying steampunk but not really but mm. it's not your traditional fantasy with dragons nope. it's more of uh it's fantasy with elements of uh what's her name uh she writes with dragons that are they they have like robotic parts and stuff i'm trying to remember the name. oh i don't know uh i look like an idiot now but um but yeah, I would say definitely fantasy mixed with a touch of horror and sci-fi kind of blended together. But that's always made it a tricky sell. Like if you look at that old cover that you have on Dregs, I had somebody once tell me. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, the guy a guy wrote to me, why would a sniper in a post-apocalyptic world be standing on a hill like that where he could be <laughs> shot by anyone? And that's... I was like, a sniper? Like that looks more fantasy or Mad Maxian than anything else I could think of. But um, I don't see sniper there. But okay, no, it's a ghillie either. suit he's wearing. <laughs> but I think I finally come to terms with, yeah, my book, I write mixed genre in this sense, but it's always yeah. fantasy, is always king. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm addicted to fantasy, I'm an escapist, and my worlds blend the medieval traditional fantasy with that, with little touches of, of technology. You know? what, what, what genre um, would you say you, you read? Is it, is it fantasy or do you also skip around um, sci-fi maybe? I skip around a lot lately i've been a little reading a little too much fantasy and haven't really found anything i like uh but i do read a lot of science fiction um i'll read uh you know contemporary if it piques my interest but i tend to lean more towards being an escapist right. so i tend to stick more to genre fiction like fantasy sci-fi and every now and then I'll, I'll i'll throw in elements of other people just to experiment but really whatever blows my hair back you know like i've been reading um What's the author's name? He wrote Sea of Rust. Uh, I don't know that one. I'm trying to look up his name really quick. Yeah. But uh, his work is phenomenal. And he is a science fiction author. And I think there's a lot of really great stuff going on right now in science fiction, particularly. And let me see. Uh, sea of Rust. Oh, uh, hang on one second. Uh, Robert Car Cargill. That's it. Sorry. I'm just giving a little props to Robert because he's. Yeah. Crazy. No, that's cool. I'm going to. I'm writing that down. I'm going to gonna look that up because i like to read definitely like to read fantasy and uh sci-fi um but so when you tell people uh people ask you what you do for a living um do you tell people you're a writer or do you have a, a day job and writing is like your side side gig i have a day job so actually full-time i'm a video producer i do a lot of events uh internet commercials and i've been doing it full-time since film school so at least i'm using my uh my diploma for something, you know? <laughs> and so that's my full-time job and writing is my secondary job. So I, I tend to, you know, get up, I get my kids to school and I work from usually about nine to one when I'm not watching Walking Dead or something <laughs> stupid that's sucking away all my time. And um, so I kind of work half the day as a writer and then the rest of the day I'm editing my video projects. I remember, because we've spoken, we've spoken offline uh about writing and stuff you and i we're, we're friends from a long time ago if um elementary school we, yeah, elementary right school after, like yeah. yeah yeah we've known each other for 30 more than 30 years um but i i remember having a conversation with you that you you told me you wrote one of the stories and it might have been how it inspired i'm not sure uh on your iphone <laughs> yeah uh it was a weird time for me i i <laughs> I had just separated from my wife at the time. And I, the last thing I wanted to do was be in my house writing. I, I, I tend to need energy when I write. I like right. to, so I am one of those cliche people that goes to a Starbucks and sits in the corner. And I, I was like, you know what? I'm more comfortable physically just sitting in a nice leather chair with my phone in my hand. So I started <laughs> writing on my phone. In a, yeah. In one of the, you know, docs I was using yeah, yeah, yeah. cross platforms to anything else. So for the I, I would say for the first like 300 pages it was working out great and then after that it was too much for the uh for the program to handle so every day <laughs> I'd be crashing while i'm sitting there oh my gosh so, but yeah hallowed inspire i wrote the entire thing on my phone kind of while licking my wounds from my personal life and hiding in starbucks so people probably are wondering why this guy was staring at his phone for hours on end well and well, well hallowed inspire was uh was my favorite book that you had written it's very thriller-esque yeah. and i love thrillers um, so people should go out and buy this one uh, and read it. But why don't you tell me about what you have been working on or what's coming out soon? What sure. store do you have? 
So I started about a almost, it's, it's pretty much almost done, but Queen of Rats is the name of my next work. And it's a fantasy novel. It's actually my first time uh, writing a female protagonist. So I really wanted to kind of challenge myself. You know, I wanted to go in a new direction. So the book itself is about um, Ember Wellen. And she is a uh, musician who's also an ugly duckling. She's not yeah. a very attractive girl. And her sister is unbelievably gorgeous. So the two of them have kind of concocted a, a, a performance where the uh, younger sister projects her talent and musicianship through magic onto her older sister. So they perform and everyone thinks it's the beautiful sister that's the one, you know, putting on the show and has all the talent. And it just so happens they go to a city called Nethra and they do that and they get caught doing it and piss off the wrong king. And the, the sisters yeah. get put in the, the crow cages and the older sister dies. You learn all this right away. So don't worry, I'm not yeah. giving away anything. This is literally the first page of the book. And uh, the younger sister's cast down into the prison system of Nethro, which is a sewer system. Yeah, and they're yeah basically- pretty elaborate, pretty elaborate prison system. Yeah. And they're told you can, you know, they're the, the leadership thinks it's hell. They think we put these people down there and they're just getting by. And if they take care of the sewers, they'll have a home to live in. But they don't realize the people down there in the prison system have kind of made it a comfortable home and have figured out ways to create their own new society beneath the city. And they tend to trick the over overlords into thinking that they're very unhappy. But really, she gets cast down into this whole other city beneath the city that only the prisoners are aware of and it becomes a revenge novel yeah. where he's trying to climb back to the surface to kill the king who you know is one going is a lunatic and is just running the city into the ground deliberately because he wants to expand the city so he's basically just ruining it and um yeah it just becomes a down and out gritty uh revenge novel with uh, ember just trying to claw her way back to the sun and I put her through hell. I feel he bad. Did. Yeah. I tend to put all my characters through hell. You know, Haladin was very much me <laughs> and Haladin's fire down to the baldness. I, that was, <laughs> I figured if people didn't recognize something there, well, but um, it was a lot of fun. Right? It was, well, I really enjoyed writing Queen of Rats. Well, I was going to ask you, uh, do you ever model your characters on real people? Sometimes I, I tend to pick more of the, uh, like the architecture of somebody, like the personas. Right. I, I tend not to pull in people I know into my work, but the personality traits, sometimes I'll pull in. But I, I don't know why. It's weird. You'd think I would, but no, I, I tend not to write characters reflected on anyone close to me. I like to kind of keep that out of it, even though I threw myself kind of in Haladin's fire. But um, <laughs> yeah, I prefer to go for the, the, the character persona trait rather than take a person I know and throw them in my work, you know? I, I, I've read all of your stories. I love all of your stories. Um, you. But one thing I found is that uh, your world building ability is amazing. Like, I wish I had that. There's, there's, some, there's some part of your brain that is switched on that is turned off of mine, and I'm trying to figure out how to turn that one on. But I'm curious, um, your stories are, are very well plotted. But I, want, I wonder, are you, uh, do you plot these out? Or do you just like, this is where the story's going and I just I just write it out? Pretty much I let it germinate in my head until I know what the beginning and end is going to be. And hmm. once I know that, I dive right in. I don't waste any time with plotting or sometimes I wish I did and I'm not knocking anyone for doing it. Everyone has different approach. Right. I, I But I'm, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants kind of writer. And it slows me down a little bit sometimes, but... I, I'd rather not spend my time in front of the computer writing up character back sheets when I can do it in the story. In the story. So I have, if I were to die today, there are no notes anywhere in this house, <laughs> except on my locked iPhone, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, I, I have the I same, have, I have the same. Yeah, okay, like you would never know I was a writer because I don't keep notebooks of journals around. I always feel like I have to keep ideas in my head until they're ready to come out. Otherwise they're stillbirth because it's happened to me where. <laughs> I write an idea down and after like six months of it laying out in the open, it just dies. You know, mm. so I bake them in my head and then just go by the seat of my pants and see what happens. Well, well, for you, what do you think is the most satisfying part of writing? For me, it's actually the driving in my car and, and imagining it. 
is my favorite part. And then once I have, I'd say like a third draft done and I can kind of sit down and read it more as a reader than as like a writer, you know, those are my two favorite parts. I just, I love the excitement of being in the process of creating the idea in my head. And then I love the, once the execution is done and it's finally something readable, <laughs> then, then I love that part where I can look at my work and be like, oh, wow, like I'm, I'm not patting myself on the shoulder, but you're surprised. You're like, oh, yeah. Like I wrote this, 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 yeah, this pretty amazing, right? together. So those are my two favorite parts. And then of course, when it's done and I can give it to people and hear what people think, because, you know, being a writer is freaking lonely. Yeah, dude. <laughs> lonely, lonely. And you never know, you know, it's not like a musician, you go up on stage, you perform and you see the reaction of your fans, your readers. Right. We don't get that. We have to guess by the reviews that pop up every once in a while, you know? I think that was always the scariest part for me is, is finishing a story and then having someone else read it. Cause I'm just like, man, I've never been more nervous. Cause the person, person's going to read it. This is in my head. Person's going to read it and go, man, Chris is dumb. Me, Chris, he can't write like this story's crap. And like, it's like my worst fear. <laughs> well, luckily when, when I first started talking to you and I was really shocked, I was like, wow, you're writing. I, I didn't know that. Cause I have like no writer friends really, maybe one. Right. And um, when we start talking and then you sent me uh, your manuscript and I was like, all right, cool. Like, cause Chris, you seem serious. So uh, I wasn't worried about reading it, but at the same time, I, you know, you don't know what to expect. And then when I was reading drone Kings, I was like, wow, like this muchacho can write solid <laughs> thriller writing so uh i was real happy with it and what's my point where am i going with this um well yeah it, yeah you, oh you were saying how nervous you were yeah about, nervous about yeah but yeah what, i remember when sometimes i'm nervous reading other people's work because if i don't like it yeah and, what do you tell me luckily uh yeah when i read your work I, I i really enjoyed it and i'm usually not i usually don't read too many thrillers so well, i appreciate I, uh, that yeah, I remember I burned through it. And well, um, this, this isn't about me. This is about you. Let's, let's talk <laughs> about you. Sure, um, sure. So, so character, plot, setting, pace, theme, or tone. So, character, plot, setting, pace, theme, or tone. Which of those do you think is the most important aspect of storytelling? I think uh, out of all of those, I'm going to say plot first for me. Right. I need a good foundation for the story and then then character i think if you've got plot you, you've got something to really hook people in like as long as it's original or something you know mm -hmm. and then character is is really top of the list I, I learned that when i first read uh thrones you know uh, song of ice and fire back in oh yeah tim he turned, our, our friend yeah tim keenan yeah it. yeah he turned me on to it and i was reading it. i was like wow these are really great characters and i loved how you know almost each chapter was dedicated to its own character and that was when i realized the real power of diverse characters and if you really nail it you really get that personality down it like writes itself so plot and character to me are really top of the list they've got to be I have found in reading your stories that if you take away the dialogue tags, and this doesn't happen in every 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 book I've read, but yours they do, where you take away the dialogue tags, you could tell I know what character is speaking. Like I don't yeah, need to know that. Relieved. Yeah, <laughs> no, I you do a really good that. job of that. You do a fantastic oh. job of that. Um, but so so no no matter the level of an author's success, uh, at one point or another, they all they all feel this imposter syndrome, and I've spoken to New York Times bestsellers. I've spoken to indie authors. At some point, every author feels that way. One, have you ever felt like an imposter, have that imposter syndrome? And two, why do you think that is? Why do you think authors feel that, even if they've had, you know, immense success? I think because all of us authors have reasons that we like to hide in the shadows and write stories. I think we're all insecure and have some kind of inner demon. And it's, it's like, you know, because you're writing for a living you know you're doing something you enjoy and then hoping to sell it to people and that they'll enjoy it too so you feel like a, a, you know unless i've been given a you know some kind of big award or something sometimes you feel like you know like who am i to say i'm a writer you know yeah. but i'd say after like six years and I, i've had some great reviews and i've had some horrible ones and um you, you tend to get a lot like a thicker skin you know, so 
uh, what's my my point here is basically uh, I'm losing my train of thought. No, no, no. You, I mean, the, you definitely need to have thicker skin as a writer. You definitely need to have thicker skin because um, we are as 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 writers, as authors, published, non published, uh, we become professors if of rejection um professors of bad reviews there, there there was one author that i've spoken to who likes to go on uh take his his like one star reviews from amazon and then talk about them on like his youtube channel and just like what was this person you know sometimes they're they're legitimate and some they're like gripes or whatever and sometimes just like this person's like an idiot <laughs> like did you is this did you read the same book that i wrote because i i don't know it yeah. doesn't make any sense and you got to be careful with that. That's like you're opening up Pandora's box. I usually just stay away from my reviews and <laughs> write a bad review. Okay, everybody's going to see something differently. I've come to terms with that. Some people, you know, someone's favorite movie out there could be Garbage Pail Kids, the movie. That's the movie they love. Other Dude, people- I told you that in confidence. <laughs> What's that? I told you that in confidence. Right? That but wasn't supposed true, to be on know? here. <laughs> everybody, everybody has different taste. And for 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 me the the imposter syndrome tends to kick in more of just like when you're working at home and the guilt of like wow i'm sitting here on my couch in my underwear writing (laughs) and there's some guy on a train going into manhattan at this horrible commute and you you feel a little guilty you feel almost like well what am i doing you know like i'm not outside digging or something you know uh you don't need to do that to make a living but you are uh through and through a storyteller uh you're also my friend um, you have a book coming out soon, sometime I think uh, 2022, maybe towards Definitely. the end. about four months. Four I'll months. Hope, the maybe. Queens of Rat. I uh, the Queen Queens of Queen of Rats. Queen of Rats. So I've read it. <laughs> I loved it. It's fantastic. I can't wait for other people to read it as well. Um, but how can uh, how can people find you? You get a web address. Uh, yeah. You on social media? What what put it out there? All over the place. Uh, if you go to kristendrowski.com. And it's, uh, my last name is a mouthful, but it's, there you go. So just go chrissindrowski.com, take it right to my webpage, and you can actually get a free copy of Dregs right on the site. You just uh, sign up my uh, subscriber. Yep. And I'm not one of those people who's going to spam you constantly. I only send out my newsletter like once every couple months because I'm not pumping out a book a week. So I don't like to bug anyone. But uh, yeah, yeah, you just go to my website, and you can see all my work. Everything is through there, Instagram and Facebook. I'm all over that stuff. Awesome. Uh, Chris, thanks for coming on. Thanks for talking to me, spending thanks some for time. Me, yeah, dude, love it. I love these stories. I want people to go out and, uh, and buy them and read them, leave some reviews for you as well. Awesome. Um, until next I appreciate time, it, Chris. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Enjoy, guys. Bye.